Live from the Mecca of Mormonism, Salt Lake City, Utah, this is Heart of the Matter, where we are looking at all sorts of different things and elements about being a Christian in the age of fulfillment. I'm your host, Sean McCraney. So we've had all our theories put in place thus far with family, haven't we? We have Christian uh, couples having babies and, and uh, <coughs> Christian schools discussed and what we call family administration or raising daughters. This is how to do it. And, I, you know, all of that is just, you know, just throwing stuff out there that I've experienced for whatever it's worth. How are Christians, though, in the age of fulfillment supposed to or what's the best way for parents to respond to children who have some, you know, issues or problems or that get into trouble or just flat out rebellious and what we would call bad seeds? Uh, I say in the age of fulfillment it's different than it was in the age of Christ in the times of the New Testament uh, because to manage a troubled and rebellious child took on a different approach. Um, going from the law, the way you dealt with children, keeping everybody together, uh, you know, spoil, uh, spare the rod, spoil the child. We've talked about that. But in the New Testament era, Jesus coming back to save his bride those directions were for them then. We are working and operating in another day. Uh, Ephesians 6, 1, Colossians 3, 20 has Paul say, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. I don't think that was bad advice then, and I don't think it's bad advice now. And the reason is, and parents know this, of all the people in the world, when you have a, a, a set of good parents, of all the people in the world, parents love their children more than anybody else. Um, who loves their child more than their parents? So uh, for a child to obey their parents is something children need to understand as beneficial to their well-being. We used to tell our kids that all the time. No one loves you more than us. All your friends who are saying, come on out and party or do this or do that, they don't care about your well-being. I mean, they care about you as a friend, but once the rubber meets the road and you're an addict or something, do they care? Your parents care. So the advice we give you is, is for your well-being. We don't want to give you advice that harms you. We want to give you advice that helps you. And if parents communicate to that children when they're young and as they grow older and they understand that principle, it makes a lot more sense. It's a great source of reasoning to use with children when they balk at your administration. So, but when it comes to problems in life with your children, uh, when it comes to growing pains, how do we respond today? How should they have responded even back in the day? And this is going to be a really short show because the answer to a child having trouble in school with their assignments or a child getting into a fight or a one of your children doing something mean to another kid or refusing to obey the house rules and on and on and on. Worse yet, a child dabbling in, in drugs and alcohol before they're of age or a, a child who's promiscuous or a child who's uh, homosexual. The answer, and I cannot, uh, I cannot say it enough, the answer is without question, without question, love. It's agape love which is defined in scripture as uh, being joyful and, and full of peace and long-suffering, gentle, good, uh, faithful, meek, and self-controlled. So for tonight's show and discussion, I want to flip that order around for a minute. And I want to use Paul's list of love, defining love, as love is self-controlled. Love is meek. Love is faithful. Love is good. Love is gentle. Love is long-suffering. Love is peaceful. Love is joyful. Love is patient. Love is kind. All of those things, right? And so if you take any problem that comes into your home with your children, um, it's really easy to fly off the handle. Believe me, I've done it enough times to know how it's easy and also how it doesn't work. It does not produce the things you want to produce in the child that needs your help. Uh, our flesh thinks it does. And, you know, I've had to learn this over time and I still fail in it sometimes. But the love is the key to any success you're going to have, in my opinion, of really bringing a kid around with the long-term results being the child loves the Lord 
and walks with the Lord later in life. So the principal calls and says, your son was rude to a teacher. Uh, as a Christian parent uh, that loves Jesus, as Jesus loves them, the kid comes home from school. Do you react with the eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth? Uh, do you go ballistic? Are you rude back to the kid? Even if it's the fifth time, the 10th time, the 30th time, I know when those times get repetitive, it gets hard to express that love. But no, the Christian would remember to be self-controlled, meek, faithful, good, gentle, patient, long-suffering, kind, peaceful, joyful, loving toward the child. You see, there's a passage, it's one of my favorites, it says, it's the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Our flesh says our anger will achieve the righteousness of God, but, but the anger of man does not accomplish the righteousness of God in his children. It's love. And that's just on the, uh, on the small stuff that your, your kid does something stupid at school or whatever, and the principal calls. What about the bigger stuff? Johnny gets arrested. Jane is the sleeping around girl of the town. It's love. It's love. It's love from the parents. You're the Christians in the house. They may or may not be Christians yet. And they're going to look to see how you live your Christian life relative to them and their problems. And it's, it's almost a, a known fact, at least among psychologists, that children often get their identity of who God is from their father. And so if you are a raging maniac, when they make a mistake, they're going to think God is a raging maniac uh, too. And so you, you learn to to bring forth this love in your raising of them. Now, listen, love does not mean that we are not direct with our children. And it doesn't mean that uh, we are not direct with those who, who hurt us. Love does not mean that we condone practices. It's not loving that when your kid comes home uh, drunk as a skunk at 13 to say, cool, dude, you know, you want another one? That is not love. That is stupidity for a parent. Um, agape love, however, simply structures our motivations for saying and doing what we say and do in specific situations and with certain people. So if the situation is your child hacked up the neighbor's parrot with a pair of scissors, sorry, graphic, crazy kid, you're driving force, the framework for your reactions to Johnny hacking up the parrot is not to go ballistic, not to shake Johnny, not to scream to call the police. It is your actions are motivated by those, uh, by the template of agape love in how you deal and how you deal with the child when they do something like that. And therefore you aren't, you aren't, Act, you aren't reacting, you're acting out of love. So Johnny comes in. So, you know, I heard that you killed the parrot next door. And um, let's just talk about this. What happened? What, what were you thinking? And then, and then you just break it down. Do you think it was fair? Was the, was the parrot your property? And, and, and that's the loving way to do it. You couch it in gentleness. You couch it in all the fruit of the spirit. And you always use love to deliver your message. Even if it's like, son, you know, there's a problem here. We have to work that out. I really don't want you to go outside for the next few days and be around uh, the, the neighbors. And I need you to write an apology letter. And we need to come up with some money to pay for the parrot. And, and just reasonably talk with them as Jesus and God work with us. Sinners who fall from his grace. And, and that he is always there to help us out. So love wins, love works, love builds. It doesn't destroy, love heals. And it is remembered, it's the love that will sink into the hearts of the children when it's bestowed upon them, especially when they're wrong and they've done wrong, right? And it tells them like God tells us, that no matter what they do, no matter what they turn out to be, no matter what course the, their lives or the direction their lives takes, 
We love them as God loves us. And that's the unique thing about having children. They take their course. They go their way. Yeah, they don't always fall far from the tree, but they certainly do what they want to do. And so the idea is that's what God allows us to do as adults. We do that with our children. We love and instruct along the way. Listen, even tough love, which I do believe in, must be administered with extreme self-control and extreme meekness and, and faithfulness and goodness and mercy and patience and gentleness and long-suffering. It has to, with extreme, because that is the framing of the tough love. And if, it's, if, if the fruit of the Spirit's not there when you administer it to a troubled child, uh, it's just going to become a battle of the wills. It's going to be a blowout. It's going to be ugly. And it's going to be lost. But listen, finally, when it comes to the most recalcitrant children, um, the most rebellious, the most addicted or abusive or criminal, nothing I said should be forgotten in dealing with them as those characteristics of the fruit of love are the framework of all that a parent does. I know we fail. I have failed. But this is the goal. This is what we seek God's help for in us in dealing with children. But in those cases, the most loving thing to do in those extreme cases where they're super rebellious, not when they're you know making mistakes and doing a little rebellion, but when they're really going overboard and juvenile delinquency and harming others and, and things like that, it is the most loving thing to let the child experience pain and to suffer jail time and withdrawals and financial ruin uh, or other natural outcomes for really aberrant behavior. And we know that this is a form of love because God does that with us. He allows us to run and he gives us a long rope. And he lets us hang ourselves sometimes with our rebelliousness. And so with long suffering and meekness and gentleness, we take our, our rebellious children into our arms and we, we reaffirm to them that we are there for them, that we are there, but we are there for them while they're suffering, that we pray for them. We're present for them. We physically will uh, uh, help them like pick them up or deliver them or do whatever that way. But we will not um, stop them from suffering the consequences of actions that have been repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly ignored. There comes a time when a parent has to be like the prodigal son's father and lets him go and lets that child come to their own senses. And because you do, that does not mean you're not loving in the way God is loving to us. Wrapping this up, what I'm saying is it's not loving to support bad behavior. That is not a loving thing that you can do. In fact, it's the opposite of love. To condone bad behavior or to support it is the opposite of what a loving parent should do. But it is similarly not loving to withdraw ourselves or our unconditional love from our offending child uh, during their worst times when they have really, I'll just speak from experience. I, I, I won't go into the details, but there was a child that I was involved with that I would work with and work with and work with and work with, with phone calls and, and all kinds of stuff. And when I realized at one point that the child was, using me, I cut it off quickly, sharply, but with love being there. It took me a day or two to come around, but you have to have that love come around. You have to be soft enough to give in when they give in. And it's, that is what God does with us. Just like the prodigal son, when he turned from the pigs and headed home, the father ran to him. But the father did not run to him while he was in the slop. And, and this is a loving thing to let the most rebellious things experience. So do hold your drug addicted children in your arms, but never feed their habit. 
and visit them in jail, but don't bail them out. And uh, I'm, I'm talking about in the extreme cases and let the fallout have an effect on their life because nothing else you've done as a parent has worked. And don't feel guilty about that when you deal with a very difficult, rebellious, strong-willed child. Sometimes it takes that breaking. But if you're always there to love them and, and, and hold them and encourage them, that won't be lost. Write your comments below. We'll read them tomorrow night here on Heart of the Matter.